A question that came from a viewer. God may know the desires of all our hearts, but only a few people are actually granted the desires of their heart. Religion is when you surrender to God so that God can do through you what God wants to do. Maybe prayer needs to be more of a time of surrendering to the will of God than trying to get God to give you what you want and to deliver what you desire. Well, hello and welcome to Saturdays with Mark and Tony coming to you from Southeastern University and we're filled with our students today. Yay. Yay. And um, what a wonderful place it is. We, this is our 10th season and we want to get started right off the bat we, with a, a question that came from a viewer. Okay, Jan here it goes. Kenny, who was here last time, she and her husband, she sent in a question that says, uh, in Psalm 37, 4, basically it says, depending on the translation you read, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. This is all stated, also stated in other books of the Bible. God may know the desires of all our hearts, but only a few people are actually granted the desires of their heart. Which, you know, I mean, that's what she says. And I guess that may be true. It depends on what your heart desire is. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and I am talking about God-fearing Christian to the core people, people who love God with all their heart, and yet the desires of their heart is not granted. Yeah. Well, there are many things to be said about that. It falls into the same category as the person who says, and whatsoever you ask in my name, says Jesus, uh, it will be given to you. And so when I grew up, I, I thought that if, as long as I ended a prayer by saying, in Jesus' name, that I would get what I was asking for. I mean, after all, I used the magic formula. Right. Uh, I sometimes think that we treat God in strange ways. Bronislaw Malinowski, you don't know that name, I'm giving it to you now. He's a very prominent anthropologist on the American scene. He's passed on now, but he wrote a book called Science, Religion, and Magic. And he says the difference between magic and religion and this is an anthropologist who's not a Christian speaking from the outside, just observing people's behavior. The difference between magic and religion, as he defines it, is magic is when you try to manipulate God to get what you want. Right. Whereas religion is when you surrender to God so that God can do through you what God wants to do. And so much of what goes on in the church is into magic. Wow. I want to... I want to know the formulas. I want to do the manipulation. How can I get God to do my will? My bidding. Yeah. That's, as, as how much of prayer is, how can I get God to do my will instead of what Jesus prayed? How can I do thy will, Father? How can I do the will of God? Having said that, when you say whatsoever you ask in my name, uh, in a previous video that we did, we talked about what name connotated. Name connotated the purpose and the essence of the personality. Namely, when you pray in the name of Jesus, he's really saying, when you pray with my mind, with my heart, with my soul, with my concerns, with my disposition, then you will get answers to your prayer. Hmm. In short, you, do you pray the mind of Christ? Do you pray with the attitude of God? Do you pray with the spirit that Jesus would pray for? Uh, I mean, when a student here is flunking a test and is halfway through and says, and hasn't studied, and says, God, help me, I think that's ludicrous. Yeah. yeah, but I think that if one is into the spirit of Christ and does what one's supposed to do, and the desires of one's heart changes, and that the I love this. It's St. Augustine's quote. St. Augustine said, love God and do as you please. I love that quote. Love God and do as you please. You say, gee, that sounds like complete libertinism. Quite the opposite. If you love God... With all your heart. With what pleases you is what will please him. If you love God, everything that you do will be oriented to pleasing him. And if you pray in that attitude... He will grant. And can't a healthy father say no? A lot of people say, God didn't answer my prayer. Well, maybe he did. Yeah. Maybe the answer is no. You know, because he might have more information than you do. I think that... And uh, unanswered prayers after 51 years of living, thank God for unanswered prayers. Yeah, yeah that's right, man. Anyway, go ahead. Well, I, I was saying that I think our, our theology of prayer needs to be deepened. 
I like to remind people of my son when he was seven years old, coming into the living room and saying, I'm going to bed. I'm going to be praying. Anybody want anything? <laughs> and you realize that this kid's theology of prayer needs to be deepened, but I, I think that's the way many of us pray. Uh, basically, uh, we, we, we see it only in terms of requests. I think Melanowski, even though he's a secularist, helps me. And when he says, maybe prayer needs to be more of a time of surrendering to the will of God and becoming an instrument of God than trying to get God to give you what you want and to deliver what you desire. Uh, prayer does confuse me. But the thing about prayer that doesn't confuse me is this, that in quietude and in stillness, I feel God's presence and I feel God entering into me and I feel God permeating my being. Uh, I, I, I love to pray in such a way that I ask God for nothing. They asked Mother Teresa once, when you pray, what do you say to God? She said, I don't say anything, I listen. So Dan Rather said, all right. When you pray, what does God say to you? She said, God doesn't say anything, God listens. And then she said, if you don't understand that, I can't explain it to you. I do understand that kind of praying where you say nothing and you hear nothing, but you feel yourself being permeated and saturated by the presence of the Holy Spirit. You feel God flowing into you, and it shall be in you, he says, like a fountain of living water uh, flowing through you and out of you uh, into everlasting life. So that's, that's the way I go with prayer. More and more, I, uh, prayer is less of a time of requesting and more of a time of surrendering. There's another thing I do in prayer. I pray the scriptures. This is a very interesting thing to do, to pray the scriptures. You know, people often ask you and me the question, how, do I, how can I get a word from the Lord? Right. How, can I, how does God speak to you, Tony? Well, I'll tell you how he does it. It's what the uh, St. Ignatius would have called Lectio Divina. Here's what I do. I read some scripture, close my eyes, and say very simply this, Spirit of the living God, what do you want to teach me through the verses that I've just read? And you know, when I do that, the verses that I've just read become an instrument through which I get the message from God. How many times have you been perplexed, troubled, upset, disturbed, going to the scriptures, and you've come away and say, you know, it was just absolutely wonderful. I opened the scriptures, I was reading these verses, and God spoke to me through these verses and really addressed my needs in a very specific way. That happens to me often. And you know what's interesting? I can go back and read those same verses six months or a year later, and they'll say something completely different to me. Mm. I think God does speak to his people, but he speaks through scripture. And we have to read scripture and then be still and quiet and in prayer, let God speak to us through the scripture and teach us through the scripture. Jesus said, if I leave you, I will send the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will be in you and the Spirit will lead you into all truth and bring to remembrance whatsoever I have taught you. 14th chapter of John.